Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jim Moran, and today we're going to try to figure out what in the world is Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the PC. It's uh, It's been quite some time since I made a video, and that's because we bought a house, so I have been busy as fuck these past few days. It's been a while. There's a lot of things that happened. In the meantime, I found a cat in a parking lot. And I've already talked about this, but the cat is big as fuck now, too. So hopefully you're not going to hear him throughout this video because he likes to run around and uh, destroy shit. So what are we doing here? We are looking at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I've been playing the game for quite some time now, actually. Uh, seven hours and three minutes and three seconds as of my last save, which happened uh, right before I started this video. I have seen most of what the game has to offer, and um, I've been kind of rushing through it just to see as many things as I can in order to make a video on it. And for full transparency, you can see how much I've played of the game. I've seen what other people have to say about the game, but I do like to do my own analysis as the What in the World is series. So, as we always start with, is going to be the options. And I'm going to say one thing that Ubisoft is, it's kind of a trend to, uh, to hate them lately. It's the popular thing to do. One thing I do appreciate about Ubisoft is the amount of, uh, oh, yeah. There's a cat just going bananas. <laughs> the one thing I appreciate about Ubisoft is how much work they're putting into the customization of the options on the PC ports. They're doing an incredible job, in my opinion. They pretty much supply all the tools that you need in order to make your experience as tailored as possible. Even though the game is suffering from a few things that I want to talk about here as much as possible. Uh, but I did notice it with uh, Breakpoint. Ghost Recon Breakpoint, their options and the way you play the game is just tremendously customizable. I have never seen anything like this in a game, but uh, it's not as big. Uh, Valhalla is not as big in the customization as Breakpoint is, but what is here is good. And we're going to start with Field of View as a percentage. As you can see, I don't know what 110% means. Is it degrees? I'm assuming so, but 110% uh, is not as stretchy as 110 degrees, I mean 100 degrees would be, so FPS limit, uh, it only goes to 90, not 120, which is the hertz on my monitor, so I have this off because I have uh, the refresh rate set to 120 hertz, and V-Sync on uh, off, but I am going to put it on adaptive just to make sure that G-Sync is uh, enabled, which I think it is. It does let you choose your monitor, which is really nice. If you have two uh, selected, you can just switch in between really quickly. No trouble. Window mode, aspect ratio, ultra wide is supported perfectly. I have no trouble with the ultra wide. Uh, games are getting better and better. You're gonna have to apologize. I'm gonna have to apologize for the cat. Psst, stop making so many noises. Uh, resolution, refresh rate, V-Sync, and resolution scale. I did tone it down a little bit because I am playing on a 1440p monitor, and sadly, you cannot choose 1080p ultra-wide in most games for some reason, including this one. I'm gonna save these. We're gonna graphics. Uh, there's a preset, of course, but we have adaptive quality, anti-aliasing. You cannot turn it off uh, by the looks of it. You can just set it to low. I'm guessing low is going to be turned off. World details, very high. Clutter. Um, these just make the game look a little bit prettier and more cluttered. Uh, as typical, Ubisoft is giving you a preview window here. So you can see exactly what is going to be changing on the game, which is really, really nice. Breakpoint does the same thing. I appreciate when games do that. And pretty much every Ubisoft lately uh, game has been doing that. So good job there. Water. Water effects are atrocious in this game, and especially on the edges where it meets the land, and uh, I'm actually stopped at a point of the game where I can clearly show you what that looks like. SSR, screen space reflection, uh, environment details, you got these uh, textures, you have uh, a few options that you can do here, but just character environment, you don't really need much else. And post-processing, it is separated in two different categories that I can completely turn off, which is great, brilliant. I don't ask much else about post-processing. For you to tell me what it is, and for you to let me just completely disabled without going into um, 
the settings files on the computer, so that's great. Uh, menu hold factor, that is when you have to hold a button to create an action, such as upgrading your gear. You can just set it to 100 milliseconds, and it's pretty much as instant as pressing your mouse once, which is great. You can change a few things, like uh, the crouch, I'm going to change this real quick. Crouch action to toggle, aim action to toggle, or hold um, quick wheel actions, uh, which is really nice. I'm not real. I don't really use this to be honest yet. Probably I'm gonna when I have more things to use. And then you have a few more things like the walk action is gonna be hold versus toggle, uh, walking speed. It's really nice to have the walking speed adjustable. Uh, it doesn't really change much. Mouse sensitivity, name sensitivity. I've always had issues with these, but turning them to the lowest option is making them a little bit more easy to live with. Mouse acceleration can be turned off. It was on by default, I believe, which is crazy. And uh, there's going to be a little bit of aim assist on the gameplay here. Hopefully it's going to be here. Photo mode. I turn it off because I accidentally enable it all the time. Quick time events. Uh, you can just select whether to repeat it. Hold it or one time. I have it on one time because I fucking hate QTEs. Screen shake. You can turn it off. I like to minimize screen shake. I don't like to completely turn it off, so I have it on. Uh, but it'd be nicer if uh, it'd be get a little bit of a bonus point here if we could adjust the screen shake. So uh, I guess we have the ability to turn it off. So it's some that's better than nothing. Assassination sequence. You can turn that off uh, because some people don't like it. I guess. Blood effect, dismemberment, and nudity. I haven't seen any titties yet, but I'm guessing I will soon. Combat difficulty. You can set it to default, but you can also change a few things if you'd like. I have partial aim assist on because, let's face it, I'm getting old. I, uh, I'm i not as good as aiming anymore, and uh, I'll admit that I have aim assist fully on when I play Horizon Zero Dawn on PC. So, there you have it. I admit it. I suck. I'm a fraud. Goodbye. Stealth difficulty. Assassin. So, this one is a pretty much this what happens. When you're in a restricted area, you get noticed immediately as soon as you, um, you're you seen. On Apprentice, you are, there's going to be a meter that has to be filled in order to uh, be considered detected. Same as when you are in uh, areas of distrust. However, in the default difficulty of stealth, in areas of distrust, you still need some time to be uh, uncovered, so you have some time to run away. But in Apprentice difficulty, the same way that distrust area works is the same way for restricted areas as well. You would be detected uh, throughout a period of time. You have a few seconds. There's an ability that you can choose in order to uh, aim quickly to whoever's trying to detect you, and uh, you have, like... A second or two to headshot him in the face so that you're staying detected. This cat is gonna be the enemy. I love him. Guaranteed assassination. This is, uh, I. As far as fan service goes, this helps tremendously because I believe up until, um, I'm not sure Syndicate, but definitely Origins was the first game I remember that assassination does not guarantee a kill on an enemy. Assassin's Creed 1, 2, 3, Brotherhood, all those games, uh, Revelations, pretty much all of them, you were able to completely assassinate someone, guaranteed, no matter what the quote-unquote level was, because there was no levels really back then. And there's no levels here either, there's just power level, which I really like. Uh, this, I have it on. Ubisoft claims that's not the way the game is meant to be played. I disagree. Not guaranteeing the assassination is not the way the game should be played. And there's a few things I hate about assassinations, such as uh, the blade is not hidden on the back of the wrist, whereas on the, on the top of the hand, and there's a sequence in the game. There is a hidden blade in this game, finally, thankfully, which is good. It's really, really good. You have some assassins come in. Not really spoilers, because these happen in the beginning of the game. Uh, before you even leave the first introduction area, actually. So, uh, yeah, I'm not spoiling anything for you. I have this on. Is it a cheat? Uh, 
I guess. I don't care. It's on there, so suck at Ubisoft. Exploration difficulty, adventurer, explorer, pathfinder, and custom. I have everything to help me as much as possible because I don't have time to waste. And there is a lot, a lot, lot of shit to discover in this in this world. So keep that in mind. There's going to be a lot of shit to explore. And it's giving me a little bit of anxiety, to be honest with you. So that being said, you have some general settings here. Uh, language and so forth, which is really nice. Uh, mini quest log. Um, compass, of course. Celebrations and loot. How do you... Oh, yeah. How do you... Oh, it's... The, okay, never mind. So it's going to show you all these things, which is nice. HUD, uh, you can obviously turn all those off here. I have it on because of the exploration that I've set. Interface. Uh, it's really nice. Again, a fair amount of uh, customization. Hopefully the dog doesn't start fighting with the cat because I don't have time to worry about these fuckers. Sound, you can uh, adjust each sound individually, which is really nice. Not going to spend too much time here, but... Uh, there's dynamic range and dialogue boost, which is really cool if you don't want to deal with uh, subtitles And they're fighting god damn it Menu narration is uh, good. You have some accessibility stuff here and then third party if you want to turn off Toby eye or on for that matter uh, Tracking and then MSI mystic light. I don't have an MSI anything really Okay, well, the dog is now making more noise than the cat. That's it for the options. Hopefully, I can talk over the <laughs> annoying sound that the dog's collar is making when he's drinking the water. Uh, quick save is F5. Quick load is F9. Really, really good to see that you can customize all the buttons you want. And we're in the game. This is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And the reason why I'm here is because the first thing I want to do is show the water. This is the water animation on the shores, and uh, basically this is a shore. Um, this is what it looks like. This is exactly... It's not a compliment to the game. I will... I'll be the first one to admit that I don't... I'm not a huge fan of how the game looks when it comes to the water animation, but... Uh, could they have done better? Yes, they could. Uh, did they? No. For the most part, the water is fine. There's not really many effects. You're not going to spend too much time swimming, but there's some ripple effect, which is, uh, the ripple effect is okay, if not a little bit aggressive. So, take it as you want it. There is uh, a really nice wetness effect that slowly dries out, shows you that your coat is kind of wet. So, this is Assassin's Creed. I am in a distrust area, but we just waged war on this map, uh, on this stronghold here, so there's not enemies I need to worry about. This is the map, the initial map. We're in Wessex. No, sorry, we're in Mercia. Uh, the red uh, axes here indicate places that you can raid in order to increase the, um, the level of your settlement. And we're going to go to the settlement here. Let's see if there's any missions nearby. I don't see any. Actually, there's one here. I can take on that. There's a spouting here. Let's see. Let's go fast travel. And we are in Ravenstrope. This is your settlement. You will be spending a lot of time raiding villages and getting resources in order to upgrade or build new places in your settlement. Each building that you build will help uh, unlock more things. So this is the smithy here. He helps by... Uh, building shit for you, which is nice. This is the Assassin's Guild or whatever you call it. This uh, enables the order unlocks so you can find order people and kill them. Pretty much the Templars. Kind of like how you had in uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Origins, of course. I like this feature. I haven't really bothered finding anybody. This is uh, Gjordve the Cruel. You find out what he is. You kill him pretty early on in the game. And then you have the zealots, the zealots, which is cool. This is a nice thing. I like it. And to be honest with you, a lot of people hate the whole uh, go to a uh, uh, tower and uh, scout the area and use it as fast travel. I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a. I want to say I'm a fan of those things, but I do certainly enjoy unlocking towers and all this stuff. So 
I'm not gonna hate it. I enjoy it. It's just another thing to do, really. So there you have it. Anything blue is fast travel. God damn it, cat. Let's see. So this is the hidden blade on her arm, which is really, really nice. What I want to do is try to upgrade the settlement here, but I can't find uh, the... There, here we go. No, that's cosmetic stuff. I guess we can... We can build these things. Oh, this, uh, only, you can only choose one thing. That kind of sucks. We're gonna have a well, because why not? Is this it? Decorative element. Okay, this is the other one. You can have, uh, either one. Alright, I'll figure it out as we go, but... The game comprises of doing some missions, uh, unraveling the story, and raiding in order to expand your horizons on your settlement. You're going to spend a lot of time raiding, and you're going to spend a lot of resources upgrading your settlement, and there's going to be a certain point in the game, from what I've seen from other people, and uh, I can kind of tell it stands true. You're going to spend a lot of time trying to... Uh, yeah, see, I can't... I don't have any, any raw materials, but I have supplies. It does take a long, long time to, uh, to build your settlement up, and you can actually... Here, you can uh, summon your... your uh, your hawk, and then you can see tattoo shop, which you don't really care about, brewery, and hunter's hut, and all that. It kind of tells you what it does on the bottom, and then you can see how many resources you need to to build them. So, that's, that's pretty much when it comes to the settlement. You can keep upgrading it. It's nice. It's, it gives me a little bit of, of things to do. And I've always enjoyed upgrading settlements in games like that, so... I'm not gonna knock it, but what I will warn people about is that... After a certain point, you do have to keep raiding and keep raiding and keep raiding. It just never seems enough. So, that might get repetitive uh, in, in time. So, why not actually make a raid happen? So, we're gonna go here. We're gonna raid this. And... One way you can get to those raid places is through... <laughs> assassinate that, it's gonna respawn. One way you can get to the raid places is by boat. As soon as you take command of your boat, everybody else is gonna jump in it. And they're gonna start uh, rowing and listen to your command, so... We're gonna take command. Boat traveling is kinda slow. It could oh, be a little go. bit faster. Let's see, we're facing this way we need to turn around and we need to go that way i really like the combat it uh it's kind of an improvement over the past titles if you've played origins or odyssey you know exactly what the combat is all about just uh picture the same thing but slightly improved as you're traveling by boat you can actually choose whether or not to be told a story or if you want your crewmates to start singing. I like the story because uh, I like to learn about my people and what they've been through, which is really, really cool. Again, the combat is kind of improved. I do like the skill tree and I'm going to get to it after I finish up some people and loot their village. Once you have the sails up by holding the space button, if you're familiar with uh, Black Flag, that's exactly kind of how it works. You can just uh, set sail and you don't have to worry about pressing W anymore to uh, to travel with the boat. So, graphically, the game looks great overall. I have no complaints about the graphics. Uh, there are some glitches here and there, some graphical glitches. Oh, is this a raid settlement? It's not a big settlement. No, I'm, I want to go for the real thing. Fuck that. I don't, like, I don't care about these guys. That's a small thing here. There's some uh, glitches here and there. There's going to be some texture popping, especially when you're outside of the Animus. You will uh, you will encounter some things like uh, my personal experience was the coat hanging on the wall when you were exiting the room that you were in. It was pretty much a blocky mess. It wasn't even anything uh, that you could <laughs> really distinguish. So, where is everybody? There's supposed to be enemies here. 
Is this like a friendly village that I'm about to pillage? Pillage the village. I think I already did this village as part of a mission. That is weird. Yeah, well, the uh, there's enemies, so fuck them. Oh, they have they're a higher level. They're a dangerous enemy. Oh, fuck. I'm not high enough level for these guys. Oh my god, I just died. Here's another thing. Uh, now that I'm... Oh, fuck me. Okay. I want to talk about the health points. If you've played Horizon Zero Dawn, you'll be familiar with what I'm trying to talk about. The health system... Man, that's... The health system works a little bit weird, so... Suggested power level 160, and I am not even close to that shit, so... I guess we're not going to be doing any raids, but there was a raid thing here. Let's let's see if we can raid those guys there. So The health system works as such. You can collect rations that work as potions or heal you if you have uh, subpar 100% health. And that can increase over time with abilities, but it doesn't automatically get consumed when your health bar goes lower, so... The one ration that you have is not going to be consumed. You have to press H of all fucking buttons. And I haven't been able to... I haven't gotten the time to actually change that yet. And it is really annoying to uh, try to press... Oh my god. Yeah, this is an Assassin's Creed game, so... The navigation is not the best. Let's see, can I fuck these guys up or are they too high level for me as well? No, I can take these guys. Here we go. Oh, this is not a... Uh, there's nothing here. Okay, this is just a blockade that you see in the beginning of the game. I'm dual wielding, but you do have uh, abilities to change your weapon. So this is a dual blade. Why can't I change... Why can't I equip it? I think maybe because I'm in combat. Yeah, when you're in combat, you can't change it by the looks of it. You uh, you can dodge, you can not parry if you don't have a shield, but you can. Um, you do have an ability that you can kind of like hammer on people. So let's see if I can find an enemy and try to hammer on them. There we go. Bam. That was the hammering ability. It does waste uh, stamina. And stamina is that one thing that was introduced over Odyssey. I don't recall Odyssey having stamina and I did finish that game. So the way stamina works is you, every time you attack and you miss and you don't hit somebody, or if you do a heavy attack by holding shift and clicking, you use up stamina. When you sprint, you're not using stamina, which is really nice because uh, getting places is kind of boring. If you light, if you if, if an attack connects, if a light attack connects, then you regenerate stamina. Don't ask me how, how that works. I'm not quite certain... How that works logically, but we're actually going to try to do a mission. There's only one available, I guess. So, what level is this? Uh, suggested power 20. Okay, so we're going to go here. We're going to fast travel here, and we're going to take the boat and try to raid that village. And kind of talk about the the stamina the stamina is, is a really nice feature to have every time you dodge you also use up stamina and you can actually call up the kind of like a horse you can call up your boat here and help you the with uh, with the raids and you don't have to worry about it navigation with the boat is not the best it could be a little bit quicker but uh, then it wouldn't be realistic i guess uh, that's ubisoft's problem with these games I do like the stamina. It's a good addition. It kind of makes the game feel a little bit more high stakes. However, also having a stamina reminds me of Souls-like games, and I'm notoriously not a fan of Souls-like games. So it's a hit or a love thing. Um, I'm partial, I guess. Uh, I could I could do without it, but I it's not intrusive enough for me to to worry about it honestly. So. If you do like stamina type of uh, deals, then you're gonna love you're gonna love this one. Why can I not steer? Can we set sail? Can't raise the sail yet. I uh, can't raise the sail yet. Okay, well, 
That, graphically aside, those glitches with, uh, with the water on the shores, and it happens everywhere, the, the shores. Uh, the texture popping and a little bit of popping in general. Graphically, the game is fine. I, I have no quarrels with the game. Or qualm, qualms? Quarrels? Whatever. That one seems deceivingly closer. What are we raiding? Why would I raid here? Is there anything here even? No. No raising the sail here. Okay, let's raise the fucking sail. Also, in order to raid, your boat has to be facing the land, which is really stupid, in my opinion. You must row in these waters. Fast travel, awesome. We have to row here. Sound quality is uh, is a mixed bag. Overall, it's not too shabby. The voice acting is... I mean, there's a lot of voice acting in this game, so... I can understand some of it escaping quality control checks. Not all voice acting is great, but... Voice acting generally is fine in this game. It's not gonna hurt your ears, so... Just keep that in mind when you're uh, playing the game. Now let's do an actual raid and see what the combat is like and what the rating is like, really. Okay, so you can I can stomp this guy, kill him, and now... In a lot of missions, you're going to be raiding castles, and what you're going to have to do is actually either climb over fences and walls and take down gates from the inside, or you're going to have to use the battering ram in order to... Uh, destroy the gate and proceed and kill the main guys, the main enemies. I was saddened to find out that enemies will just keep spawning instead of actually killing all of them. It's kind of annoying to have to deal with, in all honesty, but I'm gonna use all my abilities here. With one, let's throw a bunch of axes around, and they do pretty much a lot of damage, which is nice. You can pick up most of your arrows again. Ah, you fucker. Okay. Enemies have weak spots. As you saw, that orange highlighted thing uh, on, their, on his leg, that was his weak spot. If you shoot him on that, there's going to be some extra damage being dealt, which is really cool. Another annoying thing I found about the game is if you sneak behind an enemy that is in battle, you cannot... So, normally, these guys, if I... Oh, shit. If I snuck around them and from the back, I could have assassinated them. You cannot do it in this game. That was a decapitation. Oh, shit. Uh, fire is really brutal in this game. And I f fucking died. Okay. Fire is brutal in this game, by the way. It will fuck you. In the butthole, too. Yes, rating. Uh, <laughs> I keep losing my train of thought because I die in this game so much. It's... It is fun to do. It will get repetitive because of how much you're going to have to do it in order to upgrade your settlement. So keep that in mind. Let's see if I'm anywhere close. The cat is meowing, but he is making a lot of noise, so I did have to put him away. Oh, I'm so fucking far away. God damn it. Let this be a lesson. This is another thing about the uh, quick save. Like, just quick save. I'm right underneath. I'm not right side of an, uh, a settlement. So, come on, game. Just quick save. Or I can just say the same thing about myself. Come on, just fucking quick save, dummy. It's only a button. There, I just quick saved. So, the rating is fun. I can imagine it will get a little bit repetitive, and you do have to be kind of careful with. Uh, how you approach these settlements, because as you can see, you will get your ass handed to you. Let's see, I quick saved? Yes, I quick saved. Okay, well, let's try this one more time, shall we? Shut up, cat. I'm pretty sure they can be heard. Uh, and there we go. That's a floating head. Let's see what we can do this time. You can, uh, you don't have to strong attack to break shields, but eventually they will break from the enemy's hands. Keep that in mind. If you don't like shields, you can either um, keep attacking them or 
You can do some heavy attacks and... Here we go. Why do they not get any damage? Let's see. There it is. Get out of here. Get out of here. This guy. And he's dead. Give me back my arrows. I can't... Sadly, I can't quick save when I'm in battle. Oh, civilian... Ca <laughs> Disynchronization. Shut up, game. Okay, I'm gonna shoot that. How is he not getting... Oh. From behind. Take it. Just take it like a man. Loot. Like the game is kind of aggressive with the decapitations. I haven't had any decapitations happen while, I, while I've been playing this game up until now, which is uh, pretty interesting, might I say. All right, these guys are probably the last of them. You just have to be patient with this. It's not super challenging uh, so far. As far as the combat is concerned, I haven't had any real issues besides dying from stupid fires and explosions, but other than that, it's relatively fun to do ba um, to battle. Oh, these are the... who's this? Do I have to help this guy? Oh, it's, uh, it's my buddy. I have to revive him. Let's see. The raid pretty much ends once you've uh, raided all of the valuables. Once you've looted all of the valuables, which means that you can just go in and out. You don't have to worry about finishing up everybody. And uh, you can kind of rush through the, through the raid without too much of a problem. Raw materials. How many? How many did I collect? I need a shit ton of them. Oh, there's more enemies. Okay. Okay, he's dead. Okay, that, can I... R is assassination pretty much uh, once they are stunned. Which is really cool. Or it's an ability as well. If you get it, R can stomp people that are on the ground. And pretty much do tons of damage. It doesn't instantly kill them if they have too much health, but they will do a lot of damage and depending on how much health they have left, you can actually eliminate them that way, which is pretty nice. Oh, there's a there's a boss man. Okay, I'm gonna I ran out of stamina. Fuck. Okay. Fuck your shield. I'm gonna use my ability on you. I like this ability. I don't like how you find abilities in this game. You can't really unlock them through the menus and stuff. You gotta find them in the world. And some abilities are not even accessible because you haven't progressed through the story enough. So take that as you want. And this guy's dead. Which is nice. Let's go loot the rest of this bitch and carry on with our lives. Really? How, how did he attack me? He was just being stumbled. You have an axe being shoved on your sides, on your ribs, and you still have the strength to attack people? How does that make sense, Ubisoft? Oh. These, uh, these guys don't stand a chance. Alright. Give me a hand over here. I like the fan service that the game gives the people. I uh, I was really hyped to see the assassins come up uh, in the beginning of the game. They remain, you do stuff for them. They're dressed in pretty much assassin attire, which is really cool. Kind of like Assassin's Creed 2, but uh, not as, as simplistic, I would say. They... Uh, they do have a little bit more, I don't know, zinc to them, pep to them, however you want to put it. How the fuck do I get down there? I was really excited to see them give me the wrist blade. I was pretty annoyed uh, by the 
design choice of the developers to have your character place the wrist blade on uh, the outside of the arm. Even the assassin was like, hey, you should probably put it on the, uh, on the inside of your hand, and behind your wrist, to conceal it. And this bitch was like, nah, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm just going to have it on the outside because I want the enemies to see me. The justification behind the decision making was was not very good. I was not happy with it. So I would have been a lot more happy if uh, they had decided to put the wrist blade on the inside of the wrist, kind of make it a little bit of a fan service, I suppose. They decided to not go that route, sadly. And instead, have uh, they have your character going on the on the outside? It's fine. It's not the end of the world. I'm not gonna cry over it. Who are you running from? There's no one there. So the raid is completed because I did harvest. I did loot all of the valuables, and now I have to. Uh, can I assassinate him? Yes, I can. He's dead. And then I can just go back to my ship or fast travel back to my ship. If you go on your ship, magically everybody uh, teleports to it, so once I take command... This is how many people are here, there's the rest of them, they just magically... Which is fine. I don't mind that. It's... I have shit to do, so I'm not gonna wait for NPCs to get lost in the pathing in order to try to make it to my ship, so... That's mostly what the game has to offer. As you can see, these blue things are world events that you can choose to go... I mean, the world is full. Um, one thing that Ubisoft fixed with this game is the deadness of the world. It's not massive as... It's not as massive as uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but it is m richer, I would say. There's not a lot of dead spots. So here even, the, this is an artifact, and there is a legend that pretty much explains what everything is which is really nice player and story exploration uh, you can you can choose to hide them or enable them that's up to you if you want a more adventurous experience you can just hide everything and I, I don't care about these so I'm just gonna take those out so you can kind of see what each icon is it's really nice there's a charisma thing on the game, uh, flighting. The more you do it, the more you increase your charisma to kind of try to negotiate during dialogue and missions, which is cool. There's a codex. Uh, there's a quest list here. There is the inventory again. The one thing I like about the inventory and the items that I forgot to mention is there's not really a level limitation to upgrading weapons anymore, but rather uh, an upgrade ability. So you have to go to the smithy, and these white boxes there are the upgradability of the um, of the item. Obviously, the higher the level, the more resources it will need. So that's kind of how the game limits you from uh, being more overpowered. You can choose to either hide or show the gear here, which is really nice. And you you got some runes. Weight, fire, build up, resistance. So we're gonna do the weight thing, um, which is nice. So. Each gray slot indicates an upgradability possibility, which is cool. Let's do five stealth, because why not? And you have the rations that you can upgrade in order to be able to hold more medicines uh, in, in on you. So if you're running out of health, you just upgrade that and help you out. This is a skill tree here. Obviously, it's uh, it's pretty intricate in the sense that you have three paths that you can take. Um, each path is going to be serving each purpose. So this is uh, going to be stealth damage, range oriented, and melee oriented. Obviously, I don't really care about stealth damage because I do have the guaranteed assassination on. But regardless, you do have to take those in order to progress through the skill tree. Guided arrow. It's kind of confusing though because you do have uh, stealth abilities here, which is cool. But guided arrow is not a stealth ability. It is a arrow ab ability, and stealth recon is not an arrow ability. It is a stealth ability. So 
it almost feels like these should be switched. The Stealth Recon, which automatically highlights enemies when you're crouched, should be on this side. And then this should be on this side. So it is kind of misleading, I'm going to admit. And then most of these are going to be mixed... Uh, are gonna be a mixed variety of small abilities and the more you progress the more you can unlock more serious stuff like a sprint attack advanced assassination I kind of already have this because I have guaranteed assassination uh, guided arrow the more you progress to do you can unlock more things so you can discover more abilities and then you have abilities here which you find throughout the world so I only have two so far because I haven't really explored and you can only have four equipped. It's kind of like um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It works essentially the same way, but you have to find these on the world map. So, again, there's going to be a lot of stuff you have to do in this game. It will take, take a lot of, lot of time. I like the story so far because you have to go find the brothers of uh, Ragnar Lothbrok. And I used to be a huge Vikings fan. And uh, that show takes uh, on, the, on the footsteps of Ragnar Lothbrok. So it's really nice to see him mentioned and everything. It's really, really cool. The fan service is is here. The wrist blade is back. The combat is a little bit more refined over uh, the predecessor Assassin's Creed Odyssey. If you've played Origins or Odyssey, the combat is essentially the same with more new weapons that you can, uh, you can play around with. The... Ranged combat works exactly the same. Nothing new there. That's uh, that's pretty much it. I do like the improvements. I don't think they failed at anything necessarily. They ha I haven't s noticed any step backs. Uh, I've noticed things that haven't been improved. Kind of like how the notorious fall of oh, all those fucking missions where you have to walk beside someone for two and a half, five minutes... And listen to them yap instead of just including it in a cutscene that you can just skip. They're not saying anything important half of the time. So I really wish that Ubisoft had gone away with those missions. Really, really wish that they had. I am severely disappointed. Oh, that's uh, 130. I should probably not go there because I'm going to get whooped. I guess I did all the raids that I could. Didn't realize this is on that side. And I couldn't get that yet because that's part of the mission. So we're just going to go to that mission. There's Those missions are still there, sadly. And you do have to walk beside them. The game has a uh, an automatic walk mode where you can just walk beside them without having to worry about holding anything or slowing down for them. I guess that's fine. Is it optimal? Uh, no. I wish that they had just gone away with those missions. Or those segments of missions. I haven't really seen any uh, tracking though. Or any don't get detected or stock missions or whatever. So that's good. I hope I don't get to see any of those missions. Because I will be severely disappointed. Oh man, the boat navigation can be so cruel sometimes. Here we go. Just fucking... There. Just go. Oh, also, you cannot hold E to dismount or uh, stop command of the boat. You have to hold C for some weird fucking reason. I don't know why. Also, the British accent is not accurate. The English accent that people have is not accurate. That's one less thing I want to say. Yeah, um, I guess we can listen to some dialogue. Them. Burger's not here. It's his queen they're guarding. Others with they must have separated off to Tomworth. I heard as much from Chaelbert in Leicester. Chaelbert, what was he doing there? Not too shabby. For the most part, it's okay. It's not offensive to the ears. And the story so far also has been uh, quite satisfying to follow through. And there you have it. That's uh, That's been Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I'm, I've been enjoying it so far. I am going to keep playing it. And uh, next up is Halo 4. 
I'm quite excited for that one because it's a, a significant upgrade over the previous titles, visually speaking, so hopefully it is also an upgrade gameplay-wise. And uh, there, there you have it. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, available for 60 bucks on Ubisoft Store or uh, your, your regional equivalent on any other store that it might be available. It's uh, the latest Assassin's Creed game. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.